All right, today we have this 2015 A1502 that does not power on. So what I mean by that, we have no click on the trackpad. Sometimes these will not post, and if you're at, when you're not posting, you'll get a click on the trackpad, but no image, no chime. This device is totally dead other than the orange light in the charger, so no power. Um, something is definitely going on with the power on sequence. So let's go ahead and take a look at this and see what's going on. Let's start by removing the bottom Penelope case screws. And the screws are out. Let's go ahead and pull off the bottom, and let's have a look. All right, so... Just off the bat, I do not see any liquid damage. The device looks pretty clean with no liquid damage, so you guys can see. So let's go ahead and remove the system board and see what's going on on the other side of the system board. Um, actually, just real quick, let's measure a few power rails and let's start by just unplugging our basics here that can cause a no power issue. So I want to unplug the keyboard, trackpad, all of that, because sometimes you, you will get an issue on the trackpad or the keyboard, and then um, the device will not turn on. So just going to unplug this and let's try again. So our board is plugged in. And while we're doing that, I'm going to grab my meter and start checking a few power rails here. These particular boards will not um, give you a fan spin. Um, so the quickest way to tell if the board is actually turning on is either wait for an image or measure CPU V core at zero volts. So CPU V core zero volts, PP bus is 0 0.6 volts. So 0 0.6 volts is obviously a problem. PP bus G3 hot, as I've explained many times, is gonna be either 8.56 uh, volts if you have a MacBook Air or 12.56 uh, volts if you have a MacBook Pro with a little bit of an error margin in there of 10% or so. So we have 0 0.6 volts on PP bus. So we're probably gonna have an issue um, within our PP bus generation circuit or a short to ground. All right, system board is out of the um, computer. Let's go ahead and have a look under the scope and see if we find anything. Okay, I'm going to start with an overview of our ISL 6259 circuit, which is right over here. This circuit is going to be responsible for creating PP bus G3 hot as well as for charging the battery. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and have a look on the schematic of this circuit. I probably already explained this about a million times, but uh, here's the uh, PP bus generation circuit. So this whole circuit does a whole bunch of stuff. It mainly charges the battery and uh, sends out PP bus G3 hot. So we can see here that this is a buck converter. Um, it switches Q7130, which is a single chip with two transistors integrated inside, goes to an inductor, and it outputs PP bus G3 hot. So we need, we know at this point that something is going on here. So I want to check two things. One, I want to check voltage on both sides of F7140 because if it's blown, that tells me that there's probably a short. Um, in addition, I want to make sure that the chip is getting power. So we could do that on a number of components in this area right here. So let's go ahead and start doing that now on the board. So I'm going to switch back to my microscope view. Um, and then we will check. So I'm going to just check, see if we're getting 16 volts into this circuit on this diode right here, uh, because if we're not, then that's obviously our problem. I really don't think that's the issue, though. That's usually an issue on liquid damage boards, and it's fairly rare on a board that is as pristine as this. So this side, we have 16 volts, 16 volts, and 16 volts. So this circuit is getting power. Um, next thing, I want to go over to F7140. Um, which is going to be, that's right, it's over right here on this board. So here's F7140. On this side, I have 0 0.6 volts. And on this side, I have 0 0.7 volts. So next thing I want to do is check for a short right here. So one side is going to be, yep, we looks like we may have a short here. Let me just reverse my leads. Yep, so we have a 0 0.3 ohm short to ground on uh, PP bus G3 hot. Let me go ahead and see um, by visual inspection if there's any tantalum capacitors that are exploded because that's a fairly common uh, thing for tantalum capacitors to fail. Um, it happens from time to time. Everything looks pretty good. I don't see any physical signs of a short. Oftentimes, tantalum capacitors are fairly obvious when they do blow. They'll be, you know, ex visually burned and exploded. Uh, but I don't see that anywhere here. So the next thing I want to check is to see if these MOSFETs right here are shorted to CPU V core because CPU V core is a very low resistance to ground. We know our short on PP bus is 0 0.3 ohms, so I'm simply going to measure uh, resistance to ground on our CPU coils right here. And that's 10 ohms to ground, so that is normal. We know our PP bus short is not there. So my next step here is going to be to plug in my charger and see if I can see anything getting hot via thermal imaging. So what I'm going to do is flick on my thermal camera and then if I find anything, I will put a little alcohol on it to show you guys uh, where it is. And right off the bat, I see something getting to about 173 degrees. 
right over in this area right here. And you notice there's a tantalum capacitor under this shield here. So on my thermal imager, it shows it at now at 185 degrees. So what I should be able to do is get a Q-tip and some alcohol and put it over this area and it would evaporate very quickly. So I'm going to do that now. See that? Let's see what's under here. So let me get my tweezers. Pull that up a bit. And look at that. Remember how I said prior a uh, tantalum capacitor is typically going to have some visual signs of damage? See that? That's crack. That's no good. So this could happen if the device was dropped. It could happen if the component overheats. Or it could just happen because they fail sometimes. So tantalum capacitors do fail from time to time, as any electronic component can. Um, it's not totally uncommon. It's not totally common either. But it can happen. So I'm going to go ahead and peel this shielding off. Uh, the sticker. It's this sticker really has no purpose on the board, so I'm just going to go ahead and remove it. It's just for cosmetic uh, purposes there. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this capacitor off. I'm just going to add a little bit of flux here. Let me focus my camera again. So just a tiny bit of flux on each side. That way I uh, don't have to wick or anything because, like I've you've seen many times in my videos, if I can reuse the existing solder, I do do that. So let's heat this capacitor up a bit with a hot air station. Notice I'm blowing the heat away from the processor because I do not want to overheat the processor, which is fairly easy to do so. That capacitor is off. Let me go grab a new one from a donor board. Now I am using a little bit of a lower temperature to remove these and solder them because these capacitors are a little bit sensitive to heat. So I'm using about 370 degrees, which is still hot enough that we can solder stuff with ease, but it's also, um, it's also um, not hot enough to uh, damage these capacitors. Now I'm not talking about damage as in short, but heat can degrade them and heat can degrade their capacitance a little bit, so we want to avoid that where possible. And that's soldered, so that's good enough. Another thing I'm going to go ahead and do is replace F7140 because sometimes these fuses can partially blow and since I had 0.7 volts on one side and 0.6 volts on the other side, that kind of tells me that this capacitor, this um, fuse may be partially open or at least getting to that point, so I don't want to take any chances for long term issues on this device, so I'm going to go ahead and replace it as well. get a little bit more flux. Trying out a new flux. This is Amtec VS213. I tried it when it first came out, but it wasn't really very good. It seems to have improved quite a bit. And that is soldered. Could use a little bit more on one side, so I'm going to grab my iron now and touch that up. Just like that. Now our last step here is just to clean our mess from rework. rework. I never like leaving flux on the board. So we will just clean this up with a Q-tip and alcohol. We don't need to ultrasonic this because there is no liquid damage. So there's really no point in it. And again, right here, we have very little flux, but still best to clean it.
and that should be good to go. Let's go ahead and plug this in now and let's see if we get our voltage back. So plugging in my charger now. And we still get a green light in the charger, so that's a very good sign. A little bit of alcohol here that is left here is not going to harm anything. We actually get a spinning fan now because the board is hot. It's going to the fan will spin on this if the board is uh, physically hot, but otherwise, um, the fan will not spin on this board until the board gets fairly hot. We have 1.8 volts on V core, and we have 12.6 volts on on uh, PP bus G3 hot. So this should be fixed. Let's go ahead and see if this boots into an enclosure. All right, so I just put the board back in the enclosure. I'm going to go ahead and plug in the charger, and let's see if this turns on. And that is a chime. We have backlight on the screen, and that is an Apple logo, so this should be fixed. Okay, you can see here that we have successfully booted into an operating system, so this should be fixed, and this should be good to go. So thank you for watching, and I hope this video helps you solve your problem in some way.